show of hands. <laughs> That's what I thought. Even the children didn't put their hand up. Because we all have dreams in our hearts, whether those dreams were from when we were a little child, or whether those dreams kind of developed as we were in ad as adults in school, in college, in university. You know, sometimes they happen out of tragedy. You know, I know some people who decide to be a doctor because my grandmother died, and you know what I mean? Those kind of things. But we all have dreams, and our dreams are associated most of the time with our purpose, with our God-given purpose. So today I just want to really focus on, I'm going to go into the Bible a little bit, um, but I want to just focus on, on four main points regarding fear when it comes to our dreams. In order to kind of um, move forward, in order to allow fear not to stop us, we also have to understand the root of fear. Okay? We cannot challenge a thing unless we understand the thing that challenges us. So I want to talk a little bit about um, a man by the name of Lot. Lot had a, um, I guess, an uh, uncle. Uncle Abraham, okay, he had an, an uncle, Abraham, Uncle Abraham, we'll call him. Um, Abraham was called from the Lord, by the Lord, to go into a land that was unfamiliar. He was called to separate from his father, he was called to separate from the thing that was familiar into a place that was not familiar, okay? As he did that, he took his wife, he took his servants, he took his nephew, and his servants and all those kind of things. Lot and Abraham finally separated. Lot went into a land called Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, we, most of us already know the story, it was a place full of sin and iniquity. And um, God sent his messengers to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, Lot, thankfully, was considered a righteous man. And so um, the angels, fortunately, were able to rescue him and pull him out of the city. Um, in the process of doing so, Lot took his wife and his two daughters. I'm just going over this story because it's going to make sense when I start to go over some of the points. So as they were walking away from Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels warned them, do not turn back. Do not look back to what is familiar. Do not look back to what I have taken you out of. Because where I'm taking you to is greater. Unfortunately, one of the members of that four family looked back. Probably out of fear. She wasn't familiar, right? That's Lot's wife. She, 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 she was holding back to what was familiar. Okay? As the story goes on, um, Lot decided, okay, well, the angels gave him an option. Do you want to go, go over to the hills, go over to this city? He said, no, 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 no. That city is too big for me, or that place is too, oh, this is complicated. Let's, let's go to that small, you know, it looks kind of easy. It looks kind of comfortable. It looks kind of cozy. Maybe I can handle that. Long story short, he ends up in the hill and um, went alone with his two daughters. Um, his two daughters, I'll go into it a little bit more, ended up raping their father, getting him intoxicated, raping him, and having children by their own father. So, having said that little story, I want us to go to three, four main points. Fear, number one, fear can be rooted in us. So it's already rooted in us. Okay, I'm going to mention the three other ones and then I'll break them down. Fear can be associated to us. Point number three, fear can cripple us. And point number four, fear is passed over. So fear can be rooted. We talked about Lot's uncle, Abraham. When you read the Bible, if you know, if you know your Bible, Abraham had a seed of fear. How do I know that? Because when he went into the land of Egypt, he told uh, the person that was in charge that, hey, hey, or he told his wife, don't tell anybody that you're my wife, because you're fine, you look really good, you know what I mean, and I don't want trouble, so just tell them that you're my sister. And 
that right evolved into something else. There was fear inside of him. And even that fear can be rooted up to his father. His father settled, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but his father settled in a land called Haran. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his final destination. Mm -hmm. And so God said, okay, well, if you're not going to move, I'll choose your seed. But the seed of fear was already there. Where is, mm -hmm. is there a seed of fear in your life that may be stopping you from following your dream? I have somebody in my family who has the most amazing, like, some of the ideas that she releases, that she talks about, like, these are million dollar ideas. Million dollar ideas. Every time she has this idea, she's afraid to pursue it. You know, there's that fear to go. And I, and I realized that even in my own life, I started to realize that I walk in fear because of what I've seen, because of what is inside of me is what has been rooted in me. It can be generational, right? Fear can actually literally be generational. Number two, fear can be associated to us. So back to the story of Lot. So Lot happened to choose a wife. The Bible doesn't talk too much about her, but She was a woman of fear. If she had faith to believe, to trust these angelic beings, where that they were leading her was the right place, she wouldn't have looked back. But fear caused her to say, wait a minute, uh, this is where my children have grown up. This is where I've gone to school. This is where I'm familiar with. I know the faces of these people. I don't know that place. I've never been there. I only know what I know. And therefore, I looked back when yet God was calling me forward. Mm -hmm. Who are you associated to that may be holding you back from your dreams? Your circle of influence, mm -hmm. friends, family. It could be your own spouse sometimes. You share an idea with your husband or your wife. Oh, honey, what do you think? You know, I remember uh, um, uh, ministering to a couple. This guy had such big dreams. He was afraid to say it to his wife because his wife always said, no, you, how are you going to do that? And she was crippling his dream. Who are you associated to? Sometimes you have to change the people that you hang out with. Sometimes you need to connect with people who, who are willing to dream big, not only to dream big, but to move forward, to make the steps to move forward. Number three, fear cripples. Fear can cripple us. Fear can keep us and hold us back from doing what we are called to, to do. Back to the story of Lot. Lot um, had his two daughters. And you see we talked about the root, the establishment of fear. The establishment of fear was in those daughters. So here they were in this desolate area. There was no man around <laughs> that, you know, and they couldn't think far enough to say, hey, you know, maybe in a year or so, maybe six months down the road, you know, we're gonna move out of this place. We might find some men, we might find some husbands and we can actually have children the natural way. But fear crippled them. They started to think, oh my goodness, oh, we're panicking. What if, what if we don't have a seed to carry on? And they did something that was completely out of God's will. You look at Jonah. Jonah was called to go to the city of Nineveh. What did he do? He went the opposite way. <laughs> Not even that he went south, <laughs> east, or you know, a little bit the complete opposite way. Sometimes God can call you to do something, and out of fear you run the opposite way. And you cripple your own destiny and you cripple your own purpose, and you miss that open door that God has for you because you were crippled by fear. Number four. This is the dangerous thing. Pastor Lou spoke about it. 
the danger of fear, who is watching us when we are pursuing, when we are walking in our destiny? Who is watching us? If we are mothers or fathers in this room, our children are watching us, right? Fear can be passed on. Fear can be passed on. I'm an employment counselor, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, that's a bit of part of my testimony as well. I'm an employment counselor, and a lot of times I meet um, moms, single moms, um, who have this, mentality that it's all about my children and and and, and so I'll, I'll I'll stay on I'll stay on the welfare system just somehow because maybe it will at least will keep me close to my kids and you know I can keep a watch on them but yet I'm struggling to even pay you know like you know what else can you do outside of the little money that the government gives you you can't really do anything so you're barely surviving it might work for a, for, for a certain time, but your kids are also watching. Mm -hmm. This survival mode, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. And when you start to pursue your dreams and when you start to not just talk, but to act, your kids are watching. They're saying, wow, mom talked about this last year that she was gonna well, you know, go and do this. Oh wow, mom is doing it. Yeah. It's not enough to talk. It's not enough to say, sweetheart, follow your dream. Kids learn by action. So when they see you doing something that looks difficult, that is out of the ordinary, they're watching and they're learning and they're perceiving. So you can either choose to pass down to your children fear, or you can choose to pass down faith. So when you say that you, when you put your mind to something, you can do anything. If you put your mind to it, you know what you're talking about, and they believe you because you are a testimony to them. Um, so I said those points to kind of um, get us to kind of identify what are the roots of fear in our lives. You know, you have to kind of think about if anybody's struggling with fear, what am I really afraid of? What am I really fearful of? Sometimes. Fear comes from the devil, okay? Because sometimes the very thing that you are called to do, the very purpose that God has given you, that's where he attacks. Since I was a little girl, um, I was often called to do like, you know, kind of small little stage presentations. I was there are times when I was crippled with fear. I do poetry, I act, I can kind of sing. Um, but you wouldn't believe that before I got into a, on the stage, and I've done things in like you know in a room of thousands of people, but I would be crippled before I have to get onto that stage, crippled with fear, like to the point where I'll be. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's how crippling it was. But when I understood that because this was part of my destiny, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. part of my purpose was being on stage, I understood that that's what the enemy was fighting. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a matter of me being afraid. Because he was fighting my purpose. Yeah. So sometimes that area where you feel so fearful, pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. It probably has something to do mm -hmm. with who, what, who and what you're going to do. So again, just back to, um, oh, we still have 15 minutes left. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, let me see if there's anything else I can add before. You know, so the Bible talks about your gift will make room for you. And just as Pastor mentioned, you know, uh, we limit ourselves. Oftentimes, we 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 are the ones who limit ourselves. Mm -hmm. So again, your gift will make room for you. Um, I am. Uh, I've always had. You know, sometimes identifying your gift or your ability 
it's hard to identify because it's the things that you do so naturally. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Oftentimes, your gift is the thing you do so naturally, and you don't even know it because it comes so naturally. I remember it was through um, a sister of mine, you know, we were praying, and then she said, Alina, there's something, you know, I, I already had a prompting to go to school, but I didn't know what I was going to take to school, what I was going to do at school, what kind of program I was going to take, and, and, and the sister was praying, and, and she said, Amina, there's something that you do so naturally, mm -hmm. there's something that you do so naturally, and I was trying to think, what do I do so naturally, what do I do? And it took me a while to really think about it. And I said, "There's, I, 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 I love to, um, uh, to counsel, to coach. It comes so naturally that I don't even think about it. I could be, I remember even as a young girl when I was 13, I would go to my friend's house. I wouldn't even be hanging out with my friends. I'd be hanging out with their moms and giving them advice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The Lord had already given me a mature mind to understand certain things. There's no friend of mine whose mom I do not get along with. We get along. We're even closer friends than you know what I mean? <laughs> but it was so natural. I could be at the bus stop and I would start counseling people. Mm -hmm. So natural. So natural that I missed it. Looking for work after I had my third child. Um, usually I don't have trouble finding, finding work. But this time around, I did. I found it very difficult. And I remember I went to um, one of the facilities to help look for work. And um, anyways, uh, tracking back, I did uh, uh, my uh, counseling course. Um, so I have a certification in counseling, not a degree, not a, not, nothing fancy. But it was a year program just to have a, a counseling a certification. Anyway, so um, back to looking for work, um, and I remember the employment counselor, you know, we were, she was trying to get me back into, um, you know, this, because I did a lot of uh, residential type of um, home support, that sort of thing, and I was telling her, I, I can't, I, I'm, a, I'm a single mom, I can't be doing all of these shifts all over the place, it, it doesn't work, and my mind was so keen, I don't know why I was so keen, I said, no, I'm not that desperate. Mm -hmm. I'm desperate, but I'm not that desperate because mm -hmm. I believe that everything I do must be in alignment with God. Mm -hmm. If it's mm -hmm. not in alignment, I have no business doing it. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. just meant to go and chase paper. I'm not just meant to go and chase money. Mm -hmm. I'm not just meant, because God can pay my bills. Mm -hmm. He can pay my bills yeah. on his own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to understand that whatever I'm doing, it has to be purpose. Mm -hmm. If I'm stocking things, in a market, it has to be purpose mm -hmm. because it's taking me somewhere. Those are the steps that are getting me. She mentioned it. Those are the steps that are taking me to where I need to go. Mm -hmm. And so we were sitting there, and she just, I couldn't get it through her head. Listen, I'm not trying to do the shift work, I'm trying to do your work. I told her that. I said, I want to do what you're doing. She was in the family counselor. Like, oh, well, you know, I could see her reaction. She's like, oh, well, you know, you have to have this and you have to have that. You know, but in my mind, I just believed I could do. Long story short, um, in Chilliwack, they were hiring, um, they were hiring a job coach. I got the position. A month or two months later, they were hiring for employment counselor. I was the first person to interview. I was the first person that got Mm. No back ground. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when God has destined you for mm -hmm. you don't need the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's already prepared you mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I also tell my clients, because sometimes I see people who are qualified to get certain positions. Mm -hmm. And we work on their resume and we put things together. And they're very employable, but there's something that they miss. Confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence. And I would encourage you guys to also be confident in whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. The vision board is awesome. Have confidence in whatever you're doing. I remember this, this woman um, that, I, that I follow. Um, she says, play the part 
you know, there's that saying, fake it until you make it. I know some people might not like it, but there is truth to it. I want you to make it. This woman is a blessing because she, she wakes up in the morning and she's like, you know, before she, her business, now she's doing amazing. Before, she you know, she would, in her little cool department, she would wake up and she would pretend that she's around people and she would speak to them or she has her little office and she would... Imagine, mm -hmm. imagination is a gift from God if we use it according to his will. Mm -hmm. Imagine you are already there. Imagine you are already that thing, that person. One of the first seeds that was sown into me was here in Abbotsford. I came from uh, the church I used to go to back then. Um, there was a women's conference. I was one, the pastor, uh, the pastor's sister, and her daughter, and another friend of mine. I don't know how I, <laughs> I don't know how I got in there. <laughs> I have no idea. But we went to go to this women's conference. Didn't know anybody. The pastor was invited to come speak, and I don't, again, I don't know how I ended up there. But I was doing a, a, mon a monologue, like an act, like a, 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 a yeah, a, yeah, a poem kind of thing. And, but when I did that, and, um, and you know, the women were really blessed by it. But that was the seed. And I said in my heart, I said, God, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to, I don't want to stick to one church, no offense, <laughs> <laughs> or one place. But I want to be an international speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to mm -hmm. be out there encouraging women. Yeah. I want to be out That's there encouraging mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I want to stick into one place. That was where the seed, and I'm telling you, I promise you, that God is doing it. Mm -hmm. Even with my, you know, one of the things, I hate social media. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, Meg. <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't care less for social media. But the Lord prompted me to start, you know, mm -hmm. um, to, to go that route and things like that. And it's so amazing because I think I'm now, I've been there since 2018. The amount of people that God has connected me with. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Obedience. You never know what God has on the other side. Mm -hmm. Obedience is key. When we keep God the main focus of everything that we do. When we remember Jesus and how yeah, he walked this results. when how he walked this earth and everything he did was in the same way he wants us to be purposeful because mm -hmm. the more purposeful we are, the quicker we get to our destination. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be like an Israelite to walk the mountain, let's walk again, let's walk 40 years to a place that only took how many days? Mm -hmm. 40 years. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste time. Mm -hmm. For me, 2020, you know, we we'll talk about this 2020 vision. Mm -hmm. It's not just 2020 vision. Don't just have the vision. Walk towards it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is the word of God. That this year, no more excuses. This year, if God has put something in your heart, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. Go for That's it. it. If he says turn, go for um, it. If he says this way, okay, go yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about who's looking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get so caught up who's looking, and that's mm -hmm. when fear starts to percolate. Mm -hmm. God has given you gifts. Mm -hmm. God has put something in your heart. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not sure, just say, okay, God, I'm, I'm trusting you. Yeah. I'm not really sure how to do this, uh, but, but, but I'm going to do it out of faith. And the more faith, the more you step mm -hmm. out on the water, mm -hmm. the more he guides mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and he leads you, and he connects mm -hmm. you with the right people. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're being connected with this person and that person. This I will also leave when it comes to um, um, uh, yeah, I'm done, but I just feel like I just need to say this. Um, I just need to say this. So see where seed is needed. Where 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 where. Sow a seed where, how do I, how do I say this? Sow a seed where you're looking for its fruits. Mm -hmm. oh, that, thank you. Sow a seed towards where you're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
sow a seed to what you want to manifest in your life. And I really want to catch this in the spirit because sometimes we miss this as believers. Sow a seed where you want to see it turn to your life. I'll say that one more time. Sow a seed where you want to see the, that manifestation in your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will, I actually, I, I picked it up from, from, from Pastor David, I have to be honest, Pastor mm -hmm. David, and because you, because there's something that, um, there's something that um, you do, and when you sow a seed, specifically even financial seed, or, or whatever, could be, seeds can be different, but, but specifically when you sow a seed into a life of, per, of a person or a ministry or this or that, speak to that seed. Mm -hmm. You know? I, and I, I'm, say, I'm gonna say this, not to share what my seed giving looks like, but there's a specific person, a specific man of God, very eloquent in his speech. When he speaks, not only is he eloquent, but he's on fire, very deep, very passionate about the things of God. But not just the things of God, but also just life in general. And the Lord had kind of just put in my heart, you know, just contact him and sow a seed. But not just sow a seed, but speak to that seed. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I sow this seed. Mm -hmm. And that, that same eloquency, Mm -hmm. that you have given him and grace to give, mm -hmm. give me a little portion of that. <laughs> I'll take a little portion of that. Do you know what I mean? Grace. But yeah. seed giving is bigger than that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we go around and we look at people and, and we have this mindset of, oh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't like or I'm, I'm not, I, I don't like the way they do things or, do you know what I mean? There's that ill thinking. We have to check our thinking, check our heart. Mm. What are we thinking and perceiving about other people? Because mm. God tests that too. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're a believer in this place, then we better check our hearts. Yep. We better make sure our hearts are not envious, are not jealous, are not stabbing, are not gossiping. Because how can God bless? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He wants purity of heart. When somebody is succeeding, Praise the Lord. My sister, I got that job. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God. I'll go and touch her and say, give me a little bit of that anointing. Again. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is the mindset that God, when you win, 